Good afternoon, everyone. I mean, good afternoon or good morning, wherever you are in which part of the geography. Uh, this is Uday here from Incubate Hub. And uh, uh, really appreciate, you know, all having taken out time to be here. I mean, I'm sure this is going to be a very exciting session. Uh, you know, uh, again, uh, uh, welcome on behalf of uh, Carrier. We have uh, Dan and Ravin and Kamal from Carrier Auto here. Uh, so just to quickly, I will not take much time. I will just set the context. You know, primarily this is, uh, you know, carriers, you know, building digitally enabled lifestyle solutions, right? Against that, you know, uh, we are really privileged to host uh, Dan and Ravin and Kamal out over here. And uh, you know, what we are going to do is, uh, we are going to have a Ask Me Anything session around, uh, you know, how carrier is, uh, you know, looking forward to really, uh, you know, partner with uh, uh, new age startups and solution providers to be able to uh, accelerate their uh, journey. So based on this, you know, before that, I would just quickly give a uh, brief, uh, you know, on the speakers, you know, Dan is a senior director at Carrier Global who heads software development, architecture, IoT and cloud. He leads two COEs, the digital products and software COE. Uh, which is the Digital Foundry and the Global Cloud Services COE. He has been with Carrier over three years during which he spearheaded the development of innovative, scalable platforms and capabilities uh, to advance the enterprise's digital transformation. I mean, that's, that's a big initiative and the big group uh, in Carrier. As a technology leader, he has built incredible teams at Carrier that have developed innovative platforms like Carrier, IO, Abound, and Lynx Fleet, and have accelerated the company's core digital transformation. Uh, so, welcome, Dan, again to the session. Thank you, Dan. It's great to be here. Uh, I appreciate really, you know, your time. Uh, it's early morning for you, uh, you know, <laughs> yet uh, you made it. So really appreciate it. And uh, today we have, you know, uh, Ravin, uh, you know, Ravindra Petty, who leads digital innovation at Carrier and responsible, and he's responsible for incubating new digital capabilities through, uh, you know, startup en engagement, you know, drive hackathons for building culture and manage the ideation pipeline. I mean, that's a great initiative. And really, you know, we have just had a very engaging round table with the whole Carrier team a while back with the whole ecosystem leaders and really Ravin, uh, appreciate you Kamal and the whole team, you know, the way uh, you are really building this up uh, out from India. I mean, he's an innovation evangelist with more of a decade of experience uh, with likes of AB and Bev, uh, Invesco and Tata Group. And he would be, you know, Ravin would be moderating the session today. So over to you, Ravin. Yeah, I think, uh, thanks Uday for that kind introduction <laughs> to both of us. Uh, but then I, th I think we'll get started. I think uh, we, uh, I think maybe the first few minutes I will I will really want to just talk about a little bit about uh, Digital Hub India and 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 what we're doing at Carrier, and then we can get into a specific uh, 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 coffee chat uh, with with Dan on some of the use cases which we we really wanted to uh, 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 work on, and uh, and uh, it's it's an open forum for all of you to keep asking questions on. What kind of technologies is this something which 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 is relevant to carrier or not? Yeah, I think uh, I would love to keep this more engaging. So please feel free to uh, post your questions or raise your hands uh, as as I go forward. So before I let me just quickly take you to a couple of slides. Uh, to uh, add a quick note, uh, the recording will be available after the session, so uh, it will be hosted on our platform, and uh, all of us can have the Q and A session in the end after. Dan has finished explaining the business challenges. I would request everyone to uh, be on mute until then. Thanks, Raghu. Thanks, Raghu, for that. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we are Digital India Hub. I think uh, we also have Kamal Sharma, our, our global director, and he's he's been driving a transformation uh, on the digital side, and and he's responsible for. Uh, driving the, and building new capabilities for carrier globally, and and we are we are a two hundred plus organization based out of Hyderabad office, and and we are scaling across the country as well as we speak. And for people who are not familiar with carrier, 
I think uh, we do three basic uh, function, uh, three basic products. So one is the HVAC systems, the other is cold chain refrigeration business, and the other one is fire and security. And tying all of these together is our digital platform that's Abound and Links Fleet. I think that's where maybe Dan would be talking a little bit more on that in detail. And broadly on the tech side, as you see on the right-hand side, I think there's a lot of high concentration of analytics, AI, ML, data integration, smart connectivity, smart buildings. I think these are all uh, different technologies our team, our digital team is exploring. And, uh, and uh, I'm sure a lot of you startups who are joining this would love to know what we're doing and how you, how you can uh, partner with us. So look, look, look out for more information on that. And, and broadly, I'll just touch upon what's our model for pilot engagement with startups. I think this is a, a common question I get in most of our conversations. So we, we just take a five-phase approach where we start with scouting uh, in discussion with our business partners. And then we validate your technology within a couple of weeks, uh, uh, bringing in our stakeholders in place. And then we chart out some kind of an MVP or a prototype phase where we test your capability and also, and then we evaluate and look at some go-to-market strategy with, with, on that. And then it could finally lead into a partnership funnel. Uh, we also uh, try to uh, integrate with our corporate venture arm uh, based on the evaluation phase of that particular engagement. So this, this has been our roadmap and I think it's been almost a year for us and uh, we are quite excited uh, to really grow this model and and, engage, and and connect with all of you going forward. And then I think DHI as an Digital India Hub as an organization has been a recipient of many awards. Uh, I think maybe the recent one was we did receive a CXO award, a CIO award for Kamal Sharma for his contributions and, and, and the work we're doing at Digital Hub. All, all, the, all the transformative and disruptive work uh, our teams are, are doing day in, day out uh, is a real testimony for what can be achieved. And with this innovation program and, and, and um, having a partner like Incubate Hub could really extend us and accelerate our journey further. And with that, uh, I think, uh, uh, let's get, get, get down to uh, a, a very exciting discussion uh, with, with Dan, Dan uh, on some of the topics so maybe Dan, I'll start with quickly. Uh, can you throw some light? Throw some light. Sorry, is that? Yeah. Uh, so, so, so Dan, I want to begin with the first question of, can you throw some light on digitally enabled lifecycle solutions at Carrier model? So how is it, how is Carrier 2.0 looking at digital as a strategy? And maybe you can talk about a little bit on that to begin with as a context set for all of us. Sure. So Carrier, uh, as a, a recent, over the past three years, Carrier became its own standalone independent company coming out from United Technologies. And for many years, um, Carrier would, would, or UTC would acquire businesses that would specialize and be experts in certain fields. With Carrier becoming its own standalone company, our focus has been to uh, connect all of the products across all the, the various verticals and provide solutions, end-to-end -end solutions, uh, whether it's data solutions, whether it's um, asset monitoring, whether it's um, telemetry solutions around on the, the refrigeration side. You know, our, our goal really has been to uh, build uh, our connection with customers and, and provide outcomes that frankly, are not possible without the device being connected. So uh, originally, initially we started with building individual apps um, in, in, the, in the industry. So we have a, a residential platform for uh, home thermostats and home uh, equipment. We have a commercial uh, platform for, uh, that we call a bound for connected buildings and smart cities. So I think uh, the, the initial feature sets are primarily focused around air quality and, uh, and sustainability as far as energy and carbon footprint. And then we, we have a, uh, another offering around the cold chain. So Carrier is a world leader in, in transport refrigeration. So you know, the, the, the impact on, on food waste and, and loss of um, pharmaceuticals of a cold chain excursion is pretty substantial. So what we what we realized when building these products is, is that 
the underlying technologies and the underlying needs of them are, are very much very similar. We have assets that are connected, whether they're moving or stationary, and we have a certain amount of data and types of data around IoT. So we opted to build out a platform that we called Carrier IO. Now, Carrier IO's purpose is to accelerate the development of applications for our customers, but ultimately to let our global business and engineering teams develop on. So our journey has been really in, in, in the sense of curating uh, both external services as well as developing some of the internal capabilities that we need as far as um, core services for scale. But a huge amount, more than 70% more than of the services that we're leveraging uh, are external partners and licenses services. So we do not have the mindset of we need to build everything. In fact, our preference is, is to license and partner with companies, especially startups that are really focused and in, in developing uh, in innovative solutions that, sp that specialize in certain outcomes. So, uh, you know, I, my, my experience, I, I spent many years in the startup world. So I have a preference for um, finding and identifying experts in in domains and, and incorporating them into our tech stack yeah I, I think thanks dan i think you rightly you rightly touched upon uh the start of uh i think a lot of startups are quite curious to to really know uh how do we engage but but i think for as a follow-up question to that dan i think one of the use cases we are targeting is especially on the asset connectivity for rooftop units Maybe you can throw some light on what's the current state today and, and what do we envision and, and what kind of technologies we are, we are looking from a startup uh, ecosystem to really bridge that gap and accelerate our digital uh, strategy. Yeah, so rooftop units are a great example where about more than 70% of rooftop units are purely electromechanical. They don't have sensors in them. They don't communicate. They are uh, kind of very traditional hardware, but they are everywhere. You know, if you look on the top of any building, you'll see in many cases, 10, 20, 30 of them. And in most cases, it's virtually impossible to tell if they're broken without having somebody go and, and test them. And, and so being able to retrofit sensors onto rooftop units is an example, but really any asset that's in the field, a brownfield asset, and be able to identify and predict failure is a is a is a big focus of ours and you know that's consistent across the board i mean rooftop units are, are just a huge impact uh you know hvac is uh the largest consumer of energy in a building and 30 percent of 30 or 40 percent i think it's 30 percent of of uh of of greenhouse gases and carbon usage globally is comes from buildings so having an impact and being able to uh, identify failures and both make up, uh, occupants and building owners more comfortable in their environments, but also not waste a tremendous amount of energy uh, in overcooling certain areas because some units are not working is, is, a, is a very big priority for us. And in terms of connectivity, so I think, uh... Uh, I, I think we have bold goals of connecting a million devices. I think uh, that's been our goal. And, and I think uh, 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 what kind of start sensors are we looking at? Is it more vibration sensors? Is it more, we're looking at companies from a hardware standpoint or more from a data collection standpoint? So what, what's been uh, our experience so far? And maybe uh, I think this is all for the, first, for the startups who are in the hardware space and, and the software element to it. Maybe it can give you some ideas there. Yeah, so, so we're looking for both. You know, from a hardware perspective, it needs to be a, a, a solid platform, ideally running an RTOS on the, on the end device that supports over-the-air updates and has sensors, like you mentioned, vibration analysis, a current analysis, uh, temperature sensors, you know, the, the standard uh, run-of-the-mill um, sensing technologies. 
But all, on the software side, we are looking for companies that are focused, of course, API first. So we need to be able to license and embed technologies into our current stack. So if we're looking at a, a sensor solution, say that does vibration analysis, we want to be able to embed both the application, uh, whether a web component application, but also the, the APIs or the outcomes. So essentially enabling us to um, extend our capabilities without us building it. Got it. And and uh, also, if you can just throw some light on, on the data aggregation and normalization piece. So what kind of solutions you're looking at and what, what's been the current state today? What are some uh, capabilities that a startup can bring uh, to a player like Carrier, especially in this in the, in, in the data aggregation space uh, in, in India? Yeah, so our focus with Abound is in one piece to be essentially the ERP of building systems. So being able to have uh, normalized data coming from any type of, of system that exists. And in, in many of you will know, we're working in this space, there's potentially thousands of different protocols or interfaces and protocols, not necessarily um, types of, of communication buses, but actual format. So, you know, one uh, security panel or one HVAC system might use a certain Modbus interface and in their own protocol, and another will use something totally different. So we are looking for products that can take data and normalize it in a way that we can ingest into our pipelines. Um, we've standardized on an ingest format. We, we've standardized on a format of MQTT called Sparkplug. So in an ideal world, um, your products will be able to provide us or, or publish to us Sparkplug messages over MQTT. However, if it, that's not something you can do, we can work with other formats, but that is our desired method. So any of you that, that build products that can normalize data, whether you have drivers or interfaces for say 100 devices, being able to normalize that down into a consistent format that we can ingest is very desirable for us. Got it. I think, I, I think just to add on to that, right? I think essentially, uh, what we want to do is we want to streamline the BMS of, of, of data and other IoT information, normalize it, and then have an API-based architecture to abound. So I think, and, and that should be a real time. If with, if with less latency, I think that that will be a best for us. And uh, yeah, if if any of you have deployed similar architecture models in either different industries, not, I think it doesn't have to be on HVAC systems, but I think we would love to understand more and and, and explore on that area as well. Yeah. yeah, to add to add on to that, I also want to convey that getting a building online in in our, our goal is to get to as close to zero touch as possible. So any sort of self discovery as well as can continued commissioning is also very desirable because things change. Uh, you know, people will add equipment, change equipment, change programming. And what we want to ensure is, is that our systems uh, remain updated as changes happen. Yes. And, and, and I, I think the genesis of asset monitoring is more on predictive maintenance and aftermarket service revenues. So yeah, maybe if you can just touch a little bit light on some of the customer feedback we are receiving and 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 the and the time and the time to market uh, for these customers, uh, especially the enterprise customers, and and what are they looking for in in, in a solution, and uh, especially with third parties like startups or working with enterprise cost, enterprise players like us, and yeah, what's been the experience so far, and and we can just throw some light. So. You know, from is the question from a customer perspective, what is the response to the solutions that we're putting out or yeah, from using the, yeah, yeah. So, so the customers that we have now are, are very excited about our offerings. You know, to a certain extent, carrier, we have a second mover advantage being that we're now able to incorporate a lot of the most modern technologies into the stack. So, a big thing for our customers has been a big response has been an, a really increase in speed 
and reliability of the applications that we're providing, but also um, it helps customers from a, a downtime situation. You know, today, if a customer has a problem with a piece of equipment, especially if it's a disconnected asset, a, a, a technician will have to be dispatched, diagnose the problem, uh, and, and uh, order parts or spend hours potentially figuring things out or potentially multiple visits. As we're in, improving the visibility, uh, our goal is to continue to bring that down to the fact that a customer can have an issue. Ideally, a service technician will arrive without them even calling and bring the right part and fix the issue without, in an ideal world, them even noticing. So for customers, that's one aspect, right? And that's around asset health and maintenance. On the outcome side, we are providing customers on the abound side unprecedented visibility to their building systems and in, in a bounce case, their air quality. So if uh, customers have portfolios of buildings, being able to understand that the health of, of the air in their building, uh, the health of the asset equipment, right? So the how's their equipment functioning and the, the impact that their buildings are having to the environment in the form of their sustainability and, and carbon goals is something that we're seeing a really positive response from. Yes, thanks, Dan, for that. And another question which, which came up in our uh, initial discussion with a few startups, uh, Dan, was in terms of geographical scale of, of a partnership with Carrier, are you looking at companies only from India or are you looking at a global, global uh, deployments? And maybe you can throw some light on some of the work which we're doing there on that. So our ultimate preference is for companies to be able to support a global uh, customer base. However, we recognize with startups, sometimes the support is needed to, to grow to that. So we work with companies, say, you know, locally in India, and if, if that's the only region you support now, but have plans to export, support other regions, we want to potentially get on that journey with you and help accelerate that. So uh, our, our goal initially is to identify technologies and outcomes uh, that are that are possible with your your products. See how they incorporate and the value of them to our customers. And if we start in a certain region, say we start in the U.S. or we start in India, uh, and we flesh that out, and over time grow with you and help drive business for your your products as well as ours. Got it. Thanks. And I think let, let me pick up a few questions uh, from the chat and I, I'm receiving on my chat as well. I think uh, maybe that way we can at least cover most of the topics which they're looking at. So I think we have a question from uh, Sarvanan. We are a pure software startup. Are you expecting an end-to-end -end solution, including hardware? No, not, not at all. We work with, with, uh, we, we work with a lot of software only companies. Um, we, we, you know, that, that, that to us is, is a very desirable, uh, partnership because, um, we can validate your solution very quickly and, uh, incorporate it into the, the stack. Hardware is obviously also desirable to us, but that one has a, has a, a, a bit of a longer cycle on it. Got it. And yeah, we have another question from Hanish. Uh, will the data from the devices or sensors will always be rooted through the BMS or we will have to direct access to the sensors? This is to, just to understand more on the solution architecture perspective of Carrier as of today. Yeah, so not at all. So BMS is are a form of uh, an ingest point for us, but we support uh, ingesting data from uh, any any method, whether it's a, a web API, um, a, you know, published message, whether it's, of course, via BMS. We have an edge solution that can, on-prem edge, that can interface via IP, Modbus, LoRa, uh, um, Zigbee, Z-Wave, all, all of the kind of localized technologies, um, BLE. So, in short, the answer is is no. We we could ingest and we support integrations with any type of 
of solution. And the end result is we can provide an API, a, a web-based API on those devices, regardless of how they're connected. Got it. And I, th I think this is a question from Vikas. Uh, Honeywell already has a BMS solution. Will this be a competing solution? Yeah, so I, I think this is actually in many cases complementary. Uh, we are manufacturer agnostic, so we can integrate with any solution that we have an, an API or interface to. So uh, in short, I, I, I think, you know, in, in many cases, you know, API, of, excuse me, Honeywell, specifically their Tritium Niagara solutions are part of our offering where we can integrate and display and surface data from those systems. Uh, what we're seeing is most companies and most buildings do not have um, the same uh, building systems in them across the board and especially across the portfolio. And uh, building owners or portfolio owners need the ability to see data and, and act on that data, regardless of the underlying make and model of the subsystem. So for us, I, I, you know, I, I don't see it as a competitive, I see us as a complementary in that respect. And I'm sure there's areas that we overlap in without a doubt, but I obviously think that we are doing something very special here and uh you know they they uh they gotta watch out for us <laughs> yeah i think just to add on to that a carrier do have a lenel s2 which is a standalone offered as a bms solution in that market but i think essentially what we're doing is integrating agnostic uh, bms agnostic uh, players and and bring all this data at one shop to the customer and also provide a lot of adjacency services uh, through occupancy or air quality or, or yeah, the bunch of IoT devices that can be used that are deployed inside a smart building. And we want, we want to provide that interface directly. Yeah, I think I think you meant the um, ALC's web control, automated logic web control is the, the BMS and Linnell S2 is, is an access control solution. And, and we are very actively working towards uh, we've just recently launched a product called OnGuard as a service. So Linnell S2 is, is the largest access control provider globally. We've launched a service to deliver OnGuard as a, as a subscription service versus on-premise. And we are working towards those types of integrations into a bound where you can infer data like occupancy, um, any sensors that exist connected to that access control system also become natively available. Perfect. I think we have a question from uh, Ankit Kumar. Hi, this is from Minto.ai. What are the common fault modes you're facing in HVAC systems? Any distribution in terms of electrical, mechanical, and what cost of the downtime? Yeah, so... Um... You know, the it, it depends on the type of HVAC system referring to. And in the commercial space in chillers, from my understanding, one of the big issues is compressor failure. That's a that's a big and expensive impact. On the residential HVAC side, it has a different set. So it really depends on on which area. And and you know, you could imagine on a commercial building, if they have a chiller and it goes down, that could have a very big cost of uh, downtime. So, uh, and obviously a very costly repair. So the goal for us is, is to identify issues early so that we could prevent a catastrophic event and prevent customers from having both downtime and a, and a very expensive cost of repair. Yeah. And and, you, and we have a question from Vikas from Mechi Works. Do you have vibration sensors already installed in your HVAC systems? In, in most cases, no. So um, we are we are actively piloting uh, various vibration sensors uh, from a retrofit standpoint to uh, to you know start incorporating them. But in most cases, no, we don't have them today. 
Yeah, in fact, uh, we are working with one startup based out of uh, Mumbai uh, on vibration sensors uh, for, for a few of our chillers. So, yeah, I think it's really a green area. I think that that's a, yeah. a very a strong uh, use case for us. If you really have a very interesting set vibration sensors that can be installed in our assets like rooftops or chillers or any other units. And the next question is from Sentient. Operational excellence... Sorry, operational excellence is a key goal mentioned. Is there any other secondary goal or objective for these pilots? Yeah, so there's two. One, as you mentioned, you know, keeping equipment and assets running. The other is, is providing net new outcomes or data-driven outcomes for our customers. So if, if you have a product offering that could provide new insights or recommendations, around ways customers can operate their building or equipment better uh, for, for sustainability purposes or for um, uh, just energy consumption or equipment. Any sort of benefit would be fantastic. The other piece we're looking for is being that Carrier has over 80 brands in the portfolio, ways of providing cross-functional or cross-domain insights or, or outcomes from connecting the data sources from various product lines. Thanks, Dan, for that. I think we have a question from Yogesh. Uh, when we say operational excellence, are we also considering optimization of HVAC system based on real-time occupancy on prem on premise? A hundred percent. That that's a that's a great desired outcome. You know, you have a lot of buildings that are being utilized totally different today than they were just three years ago. So being able to turn off air conditioning or, or reduce air conditioning um, when the spaces are unoccupied, adjust cleaning schedules when spaces are unoccupied, you know, occupancy is, a, is uh, very, very desirable outcomes, both in the form of binary occupancy detection, but especially in the form of uh, people counting. Yes, yeah, so I think uh, that's a very strong demand for such a uh, use case uh, to really reduce our electric electri and, and, and generate energy savings in terms of HVAC operations itself. I think we have an interest. We have a question from uh, Sin Chetan. Uh, we are syntactic AI, specialized in data aggregation and normalization. Major problem we face is how is data shared with us? What is a mode that the data is planned to be shared? I think this is yeah, so, the use case. Yeah. So that's so I mean that's a that's a good question. I, I'd actually have a follow-up question on that. Are you saying it, how is data shared to you in the form of where you're going to provide insights or data, or how is it shared to us? I'll 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 try to answer both. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So so in general for us. What we expect, especially from a data normalization platform is, is that you would ingest either directly from the sensors or we would feed, we, we could send you a stream of data where you're normalizing it and then you'd feed it back into our pipelines. In the, in the reverse, where if you have a system, say, that provides AI insights around equipment failure or occupancy inference, any sort of outcome, we could provide a normalized stream of data from the building, which in many cases, especially for companies that don't specialize in data ingest. So if you're a startup company and you're, you provide HVAC insights, for example, you probably have a very long amount of onboarding time it takes you to bring a building online. It could take anywhere from you know, a month to a few months for you to get all the building systems mapped and online. Since we're ingesting and normalizing into a bound data, there is a way that we can start streaming you data essentially day one of turning on your product. So we could reduce your time to, to outcome greatly, as well as keep that data continually updated based on any sort of changes to that environment. I hope that answered your question. Yes, I, I think, yeah, I, th I think, uh, Chetan, if you have any follow-up question, yeah, please do uh, let us know. You can you can just raise your hand. 
I think we have a question from Greg. Uh, we have just released a 100 ppm methane sensor for environmental monitoring. Would this fall on, into your HY group or other areas of carrier? So I would, I, I'm not 100% sure that might fall into the fire and security team, uh, the sensor team, but uh, you know, it's obviously a very, any sort of sensor is very desirable for us, uh, you know, for uh, as long as it, especially if it's connected and it could provide uh, insights to our platforms. Yeah, on that note, Greg, yeah, if you can just, uh, I think I've shared my uh, our email address, please do drop us a note. I think we will definitely reach out to our industrial uh, 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 fire team to, uh, for follow-up conversation with you. The next question is, we have a question from James. Do you see a possibility for multi-point temperature measurements solution in HVAC systems? So in short, yes. You know, the it, on on a BMS in in many cases, you know, averaging multiple uh, temperature sensors is is uh, part of the mix. Um, in in a bound, we can aggregate sensors across any any subsystem. So it, it depends on the outcome, but yeah, in in depending on the use, yes, very much. Uh, the the averaging of sensors or having multiple sensors is critical depending on the size of the space. Got it. And then we have another question from Mark. Uh, you mentioned brownfield installs. Does Carrier want a solution that will easily integrate with brownfield installs as well as provide greenfield solutions or just greenfield? No, brownfield is by far the preference in in most cases. You know, obviously greenfield is is important and. We incorporate that, but our primary target at this point is very much brownfield retrofit solutions. Hope that answers Mark the question on that. And we have a follow up question from Sandy. Uh, would you be also be able to share historical data for us to train our models to detect anomalies? Yes. Yeah. Our our um, our plan, especially working with with um, ISVs and, and partner solutions is to hydrate historical data uh, on, on when, when activating with that customer. So in addition to getting real-time stream normalized data, we would hydrate historical data as well. Yes, Saravan, I think, I think based on the scope of, 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 the, of, of that particular uh, engagement, I think we will, we will be looking to share some of our available data with us for few of our smart billing customers. And uh, we have another question from Sachin. Approximately how many subsystems will be of carrier in a building and how do you collaborate with suppliers of other subsystems? Yeah, so that's a great question. So, you know, a building has the primary subsystems in building is electrical, HVAC, security, access control, uh, you know, fire systems, uh, lighting control systems, shade control systems. So, you know, in some of those categories, uh, Carrier absolutely has offerings, but in others we don't, so we partner. And uh, the, the intention of a bound is to be able to ingest and normalize data from any type of building sus subsystem and number. Uh, now, certain subsystems, especially uh, a lot of legacy systems, don't necessarily have uh, published interface uh, documentation and protocols. However, uh, in those cases, there are companies that have partnered with those vendors or those partners that have normalized that further. So um, we we will we will work with any any uh, manufacturer that uh, wants to work with us and, and desires to integrate to our platform, as well as any partner company of those manufacturers that has created interfaces to them. Uh, thanks, Dan. Hopes hope that answers your question, Sachin. But then, yeah, we we do, we do have multiple other uh, systems that we need to integrate with. I think I think a typical large commercial building. And yeah, I do, I do have a couple of questions on uh, uh, if if I want to start working with carrier, will the pilot will be in the U.S. or in in India, or what is your preference and and what 
will decide which location. So, so our preference is both. Uh, if, if, you know, depending on, on, um, you know, depending on the product, our, our preference would be to pilot it in both the, our India hub as well as in our US uh, hub to to really test and integrate with our platform. We we understand that some products are not available in the US that are out of India. So in that case, we start with just India. Uh, so we're, we, we can be flexible based on your constraints. Got it. And, and another question is, uh, I'm a startup. Uh, I did have experience in predictive maintenance, but not for HVACs. Can we still apply for your program for consideration? Absolutely. Absolutely, because it's our a big yes. our our platforms are um, are across any type of building system. So if you can predict failure of equipment um, that is is not HVAC, is absolutely desirable. I think there was another question from Lewis. How much development is being done within your maritime offerings? So. That's a good question. So there's quite a bit in the um, fire uh, detection suppression systems on maritime, as well as access control like locks. Um, we we are exploring um, solutions and building products like a bound for maritime. The challenge is, of course, is connectivity. So our products are all cloud native. We do have an edge component, an offline edge component, but to the level that's needed on maritime is something that we are we are looking at. And you know, with the proliferation of um, of satellite internet service, uh, that will likely help. Specific question to, to ask, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So to be more clear in my question, um, uh, with your maritime offerings, I saw a, a number of things on your website regarding uh, HVAC and refrigeration. Is there a whole lot of development in that space? I do understand the locks and security and fire suppression systems that you guys work on, but with the, uh, with the cooling systems, is there much development on that front? Thank you. So, I would assume so, but the, the truth is, I don't. I don't know the answer at this point. But I, we could investigate and get back to you on that. I, I would presume yes, because that is a big uh, vertical. But uh, you know, my focus around the around our digital platforms, it's uh, it, that's where my visibility is is kind of stops. But if Excellent. you're talking about hardware development, uh, I, I'm certain there is. Okay, excellent. Yeah, um, I've already actually sent you an email on the subject, so we'll discuss offline. Thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah, no, no problem. And I'll, I'll find out the answer and, and get back to you if I don't know. Thanks. Yeah, yes, I know we're at the end of the hour, but I just have one for final question to take, and then maybe we can do a small uh, a, a, a closing remarks, Dan, in terms of what we're looking at in, in, in terms of these two use cases of from maintenance of equipment, you're looking for a continuous monitoring or just want to get alerts on fault? Um, you know, it, it depends. Uh, in, in some cases, we're looking for continuous monitoring for an optimization standpoint. But, you know, if we're talking just fault detection, the ideal scenario is for us to get um, just notified when when there's an issue that needs to be addressed. Again, it, it really all depends uh, on on the use case. So I I'd say both. Yes, thank you. I think on that note, I think yeah, we definitely want to look at uh, these alerts. But then the frequency it depends on case to case as per the equipment uh, analysis. And of course, we do need to have an explanation for every alert. I think uh, yeah, if your AI model can give us some insights on which subsystem of equipment needs repair that can be that data can be transferred to our technician uh, before visiting the location and that will really bring a lot of efficiency into the process so yeah thank you so much and i know the very interesting questions and 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 it was really good to hear from uh, you guys about what kind of uh, uh 
uh, thoughts you have on, on these use cases. Maybe I'll request uh, Dan for any closing remarks on the observations and, and, and uh, what we're looking for in the future. So thank you all for, for joining. Uh, as as I, I kind of alluded to earlier, we are very interested to learn about what you're working on and to consider incorporating you into our offerings. Our, our belief, especially with the technologies that are available today, you don't need to be a big company to build a, a world-changing capability. And uh, we want to help amplify your product and message and uh, deliver it to our customers to ultimately delight them. Our focus is uh, increasing our continually increasing our customer satisfaction and, and value that they're getting from a product, whether they buy a product today or whether they bought a product from Carrier 10, 20 years ago. So please make sure to reach out to Ravindra with any of your, your uh, offerings. We, we, we want to learn about them. And uh, yeah, just uh, we're happy that you joined and, and please keep Carrier in mind when you're looking for partners uh, in, in your journey. Sure. Thank you, Dan, uh, for your time and, and, and thanks to Incubate Hub, especially with I and Raghu for organizing this. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, please thanks. reach out for any questions uh, on the email we shared us so that we can, we can get back to you and, and yeah, and then you can reach out to Incubate Hub for any other follow-up questions as well. They can, they can share us with us. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks everyone.